Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video we will discuss lead code question 1514 that says path with maximum probability. So guys, although this question is of a easy medium level, but it is important that you visualize that how the algorithm works in the backend. So yeah guys, stick till the end and watch the complete video. Now here you would be given one undirected graph and the edges will consist of some value and that value denotes the probability. Okay, so uh, uh, there would be one probability associated with all the edges and the given graph is undirected. Further, you would be given two nodes that is the start node and the end node and you need to return the path with maximum probability. As the question says that you need to return the path from start node to end node with a maximum probability. The output is not actually the path but the probability of that path. Okay. And uh, that probability uh, must be up to up till five uh, decimal places. So if you take a look at the first example here, the start node is a node 0 and the end node is a node 2. And these are the different uh, edges with uh, their probability. Now if you take a path from node 0 to node 2 directly, see there is a direct path, but the probability would be 0 0.2. If you go from 0 to 1 and then 1 to uh, 2, then the probability would be 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.5, see. So that would be nothing but 0 0.25. And this 0 0.25 is greater than 0 0.2. So yeah, the, we say would select this part and return 0 0.25 as our answer. So guys, uh, uh, the question is very much simple here that we simply uh, need to select the path with the maximum probability. The probability of a path can be calculated by multiplying all the probabilities of that path. And yeah, at the end, we need to return that probability output. Okay. Now, this question has some prerequisite knowledge of the graph of algorithms like Bellman fault algorithm or Dijkstra's algorithm then you must know these two algorithms uh, uh, to solve this question. So these are the prerequisites. Okay. So uh, but how you can for derive the intuition to solve this question. So one thing is see if uh, in a given undirected graph if you don't have any weights or any costs associated with the edges then you can simply find the shortest path by using breadth search right. Then the simple BFS would work to find the shortest path. Now, whenever you are given some uh, additional thing like a cost of the edges, weight of the edges or the probability. See, probability is nothing but one extra parameter added to the edge, right? So that can be treated as a weight. So given this type of extra parameters and then in that case, if you if your question asks to find what is the best path, then one such uh, algorithm that will help you is nothing but Dijkstra's algorithm. So that's why I just told you earlier that you must have the knowledge of Dijkstra's algorithm, how fundamentally Dijkstra's algorithm will work. And yeah, we can make a slight modification in the Dijkstra's algorithm to get the answer that we want. So uh, here, uh, since we need to consider edges, edges weight or the probability, so we would require a Dijkstra's algorithm and simple BFS won't work here. Now, originally the Dijkstra's algorithm is something like this. It is nothing but a BFS algorithm plus we sort the edges based on the cost in ascending order. So in the Dijkstra's algorithm, we are, would either use minimum heap or a set and both of them sort the edges based on the cost in ascending order. Okay. So this is the original Dijkstra's algorithm. Now here in this question, we are asked to find the path with a maximum probability. So if you treat this probability as a cost, then we have to sort in descending order and not ascending, right? Because we want maximum probability path. So we would modify Dijkstra's algorithm in such a way that we get the path with maximum probability. So this BFS would remain the same, but instead of sorting in ascending order here, we would sort in descending order, right? That's why we would use max heap. Okay. So in, in the, in this originally BF, uh, original Dijkstra's algorithm, we, we can either use set or minimum heap. They both return the values in ascending order, but here, we, here we want maximum probability path. So we have to, um, make uh, the nodes to arrange in descending way. So that's why we would use maximum heap here. So guys, this is a small modification that we would do in the Dijkstra's algorithm. So if you, uh, if I would say that how Dijkstra's algorithm would work uh, here, then let's make a dry run and visualize how it works. So assume this as a graph, this is an undirected graph and this is the start node and this is the end node. Okay. And these are the probabilities of each of the edges. Now we would initialize the priority queue or the max heap by 1.0 that is a probability as one and starting node. So inside the priority queue or the max heap we would take a pair of double and int. So this would this is a double value 
and this is the integer value so we would take a pair of double and int and we would initialize with probability 1 and a starting node at 0 see the starting node has a probability 1 right and yeah and afterwards we, from the starting node we would try to just explore what all nodes can be reached from the starting node okay so in the bfs what we would what we do usually do is uh, we initialize the queue so this is the initialization of the queue and the, in the next step what we would do we would pop out the topmost element or or here the element with a maximum probability so we would pop this element out and then try to explore all the adjacent nodes of this node so here the adjacent node are 1 3 and 2 okay so then uh, from node 0 to node 1 the probability is 0 0.5 so we update the probability as well as the value 1 then the next node is the node 3 the prob with the probability 0 0.3 so yeah we add this and then 0 0.1 with 2 okay now the next thing is we would take the node with the maximum probability so we would pop this node and try to explore its adjacent node so adjacent node of node 1 is node 3 see node 0 is already visited now to keep track of a node that is already visited what we would do is we would create one vector and that will store the value of uh, the probability at which it was visited so let's say we would store that uh, in a vector we would store vector of a node 0 it, it was visited so initially uh, uh, the probability of vector of node 0 was 1 right so yeah we marked it as 1 uh, then yeah let's say we visited uh, node 1 with a probability 0 0.5 we visited a node 3 with a probability 0 0.3 see in this step i am talking about this step and then we visited node 2 with a probability 0 0.1 okay now here if you see that we from 1 in this step from 1 we can again visit node 3 now do we have to visit or not so that decision is made by comparing the values of the probability so initially we visited node 3 with a probability 0 0.3 now if we visit from node 1 to node 3 then the probability would be 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.7 so that is 0 0.35 so yeah this is a better probability than the original one so we update this value to 0 0.35 and that's why we push this node 3 inside our priority queue so this decision that do we have to again visit this node or not that is uh, made by comparing the probabilities that is the initial probability as the probability of visiting the node in the current iteration that is uh, from 1 to 3 so yeah that's why we change uh, the probability to 0 0.5 because it is better than the previous and also we added that node into our priority queue now in the third uh, iteration we would remove this the one with the maximum probability from the priority queue and try to explore the adjacent so adjacent of node 3 is uh, node 1 and node 0 but if you see that uh, visiting uh, node 3 for uh, node 0 from node 3 is not good because the probability is 0 0.3 but node 0 is al al already probability of 0 of 1 okay there is already better probability here now if you visit uh, this 3 to 1 then the, uh, the probability would be 0 0.35 multiplied by 0 0.7 this would be the probability so this would result in something say, oh, 35 377 okay this would be the answer okay now 0 0.225 is not better than uh, this right it is not better probability see if you are visiting node uh, 1 from node 3 then you would multiply 0 0.35 and this edge cost right you will multiply this probability and this probability so that will result in 0 0.225 and that is not better than 0 0.5 so we won't visit node 1 now adjacent of 3 is 2 yeah 2 is also adjacent of 3 so calculate 0 0.35 multiplied by 1 so it is nothing but 0 0.35 okay and previously node 2 has a probability of 0 0.1 but this answer is better than 0 0.1 so we would update this to 0 0.35 that means we have found one better way to visit node 2 that has better probability and that's why we would again push the node 2 with 0 0.35 probability to our priority queue okay we have pushed this value now in the fourth iteration we would pop this out now whenever we pop any element from this priority queue we would check whether that element is the end node or not so yeah 2 is our end node so we would stop and return the probability it is containing as our answer because that is the best probability that we can have here okay got it like uh, the other probabilities to reaching uh, the node 2 would all would be lesser than 0 0.35 because uh, you can easily get this that we are using the maximum heap here so every time when we visit the node for the first time then that would be the best probability okay so here we are visiting the node 2 for the first time and that would be the best probability all uh, right 
So 0.35 is our answer and we would stop. So the code for this is also easy, not that uh, difficult here. So we in, uh, created the graph of int and double. So int will contain the node and double will contain the uh, probability. So we push all the edges inside the graph and then we took the max heap priority queue. We push probability as well as the start node and took this vector to check uh, whether the node is visited and if it is visited then what was the probability. So we initialize zero for all the nodes initially. Okay. Then we uh, see one thing I forgot here. You also need to make start equal to one. Okay. Also do this here. Now further, this is a typical BFS. So what we do in breadth search is take the topmost element of the queue, then try to uh, then we check whether that element is the end and index or the end element or the end node. Yeah, in that case, simply return the answer. Else, try to explore the different neighboring elements of the current element. And uh, the decision to take the neighboring element into our BFS relies on this um, calculation of the probability. That means the initial probability present in this vector, if that is lesser than the current probability, so that is current dot first, so the probability uh, of the current node multiplying by the edge, right? So yeah, if we get a better probability, then we, uh, we would update this vector V as well as push the new, uh, the, new, the element with a new probability into our priority queue. So yeah, this way we would recurse until we get this condition. So if it is not possible to get this condition in the end, we would return zero. As we hear from here, we were we are already returning our answer. Okay. So guys, it is simple, right? If you would have known how to uh, use priority queue, and how how distress algorithm work then this question was very much simple to do okay and now talking about the time and space complexity the time complexity here is m plus n log n by m because here we are uh, traversing m edges so here i am considered i have considered m as number of edge and n as number of nodes so in order to build this graph we have to traverse m times so that's why this m plus this uh, bfs call will take n log n so uh, let's say if there are n nodes and since for each n time we are using priority queue that is uh, insert as well as uh, pop operation. So that's why it would be n log n time complexity and space complexity is m plus n, m for this graph and n for the max heap that we are using. So yeah guys, that's all for this video. If you guys have still any doubts then do let me know in the comment section. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.